Good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Lunacy. Luna. Luna means the moon. When you put an A-C-Y behind it, it becomes lunacy. It means moon crazy. In old days, we used to think that moon crazy referred to when the full moon came out, people acted weird. Today, it had a new meaning. It's got to do with the drug culture. Have you ever had somebody you knew or with a family member who was hooked on drugs, had an addiction, and you just couldn't understand why in the world they kept going back and forth, back and forth to that addiction over and over again? Hopefully I can give you a few examples of what I've learned about addictions. I work at Jobs Plus Employment Network, located downtown Cincinnati, the roughest, meanest, toughest part of town. In fact, it was just voted the most toughest neighborhood in the entire United States. One out of every four people get victimized if they go down there. So I made sure that I'm with one or two people, not the fourth. <laughs> My job is to bring employers to the board who will hire these people who come through our doors. The people who come through our doors, 70% of them are ex-offenders. And of that 70%, Another 70% of them are drug-related charges that got them in prison to begin with. My job is to try and help them get employment. Not an easy task. I've got to help them break the bondages of poverty. Again, not an easy task. We'll use Joe as an example. Joe did 15 years in prison. He had never, ever had a job before in his entire life. So I asked him, what are you going to do when the employer in the interview says, why should I hire you? You have no job experience. What are you going to do? He says, I don't know. What, what should I do? I says, you got to turn a negative into a positive, and here's how you do it. You tell him, hey, I've never been trained to do anything the wrong way. I've never been trained before at all. In fact, you're going to be my first training, and I'm going to do it exactly the way you want me to do it. Exactly. I'm going to be like a piece of putty in your hands and you can mold me any way you want me and I'll do it perfectly the way you want it. He says, wow. He says, well, employer, go for that. I says, don't worry. I says, I'm taking you to your first employer who's at the bottom of the barrel of employers. I says, he'll hire anybody as long as you give him an excuse. Says, okay, okay, I, I, I think I can do that. And he says, you could just tell his chest went up and he had confidence renewed. So we went on the interview. He says, to the interviewer, hi, my name is Joe, blah, blah, blah. They get through all the, through the uh, prerequisites of the interview, and the interviewer looks over the resume and he says, you've got no, no work history. Why should I hire you? As quick as you please, Joe said. Well, according to Gary here, you're at the bottom of the employer barrel, and you'll hire anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we could, we could be a good fit. <laughs> I had other problems with Joe as well. Before I took him on other interviews, he kept dressing inappropriately. On one occasion, he wore a t-shirt that said, plays well with self. That's not going to work on an interview. <laughs> on another interview, and this was, this was with a woman, he had actually said, I'm no gynecologist, but I'll take a look. And that's the kind of guy that he was. And he would wear these, these, these inappropriate t-shirts that just couldn't go to an interview with him. And I had to keep sending him back home. And he'd come back with another t-shirt on. And some were worse than the others. Another person I had come through my office was Dawn. Dawn had been locked up for three years for drug use. And when she got out, she came to see me and said, uh, I've been clean for three years and one month. Well, three years of that was in the prison. <laughs> so how, how long has she really been accurately clean? Well, according to her, one month. So I had my doubts. Plus, I noticed that her eyes were watering, they were red, and her nose was running. These are all signs of drug use. So I asked her, I said, can you pass a urine test? She said, oh, no problem. I studied for it for a week, and I could study with my, I could, I could do it with my hand tied behind my back. <laughs> so I gave her the drug test, and it came back. Oh, by the way, I asked her, I said, what's wrong with your eyes, your nose, and your, and your, uh, all the running, she says, I got allergies, really bad, bad allergies. So I, I, I take her to the drug test, I get it back, and it says that she has been using marijuana repeatedly. So I tell her, I said, according to this, you've been using marijuana quite a bit. She says, yeah, I'm allergic to it. 
<laughs> and I said, well, that's not going to work. She says, well, I've got an excuse that, that will fit. She says, you know, the poppy seeds on hamburger buns will cause you a positive reaction to THC. I said, that's if you had 50 hamburgers. She says, that's about right. Yesterday we had a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> so suffice it to say that Dawn's, Dawn's work experience was, was very limited where I could get her put where I could get her located at. Bill was another character all together. He told me that he was completely clean. Said he could take a drug test in the dark with his eyes shut. I give him, I give him the, the urine bottle. He comes back, put the dipstick in, comes back, positive methamphetamines, positive marijuana, positive crack cocaine. I said, brother, I says, you're positive for all these. I says, you probably have diabetes. He says, that drug test is bull. He says, I have never, ever done diabetes. Never. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. He says, I don't mess with needles. He says, those people are drug addicts. They have diabetes. He says, I'll smoke something every now and then. I admit it, but I ain't sticking needles in me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those three examples are, are prime in explaining how people go to prison and still come back out and do drugs, even after they've been locked up for extended periods of time. And uh, it occurred to me that it's lunacy. It's lunacy. There's an old saying in the drug culture that you, you will continuously get what you've always gotten if you keep doing what you've always done, and you'll keep being what you've always been. So my point here in this, this presentation is what bad habit do you have? Is it your temper? Is it your, is it your inability to uh, stay off of drugs? Is it your inability to quit smoking, Ron? What is it that you do that you need to fix, that you need to work on to make yourself a better person? Because otherwise, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep being what you've always been, and you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. That's lunacy.